So it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this ceremony this morning as we gather for the naming of this bridge in honour of Tom Clark. The naming of the bridge is a significant event for the city and indeed a significant event in the Dublin City Council's commemorations programme. The City Council's commemorations committee, made up of elected representatives and officials, aimed to present a programme that engaged the interest and participation of people throughout the city whilst adopting an inclusive and respectful approach to 1916 and a central role in the struggle for Irish independence. Our programme has supported over 200 community groups across Dublin in marking 1916 in their own communities and has delivered hundreds of lectures and talks and workshops and exhibitions, books and digital content, as well as two major capital projects in the Henrietta Street Museum and Richmond Barracks, which was opened yesterday by Ord Vera at Creamy Opened in 1984, the East Link passed into the ownership of Dublin City Council under the care of our roads and traffic department on the 1st of January 2016. 14,000 vehicles pass over the bridge each day and all toll income from those vehicles goes towards the ongoing maintenance of the bridge and for various transportation projects throughout the city. <coughs> when the bridge came into public ownership, the Tom Clark Committee, I'm glad to see their president here this morning, the Tom Clark Committee lost no time in proposing that it be named in honour of Tom Clark and their proposal was considered and approved by the council's commemorative naming committee and endorsed by the full city council, council at its meeting of the 7th of March 2016. There was no more fitting day than today, the 100th anniversary of Tom Clark's execution for this naming ceremony. And it's also fitting that the naming be performed by our president in the presence of the Lord Mayor. And so it's now my honor to invite Uthron Naharan, Michael D. Higgins to speak. Ianna <laughs> I'm absolutely delighted to be here and to have been, have been asked to be part of this naming of the bridge in, in honour of Tom Clark. I am delighted particularly that we have had so many members of the community participating in these events and this must be of course a very special event for the members of the Clark family, the Tom Clark Memorial Committee, Mark Ta'ain Bujamak Aka, they have succeeded and members of the officials of Dublin City Council and all of who were involved in any, in, in any way. In recent weeks, the events we have been commemorating have been reflecting on the proclamation of 1916, on Tidjelaka Savi, the idealism that inspired it, and the great debt of gratitude that we owe to the many brave men and women who offer their lives in order that Ireland could become a free and independent state. The names of the leaders of the 1916 Rising, of course, are written indelibly into the history books of Ireland. Some of them have also been immortalised in the names of Dublin's streets and buildings. And thus, as people pass by these buildings, they are embedded into the daily lives and consciousness of thousands of citizens as they go about their normal business. You have heard how many people use this great bridge and as they pass over, they will perhaps think again of the, 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 on Leoc, uh, the, 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 the hero whose name it carries. And today, the name of Tom Clark, the first signatory of the proclamation, will join that roll call. And it is perhaps an honour that some would suggest is overdue, but there can be no doubt that he is the figure that links the revolutionary generation. Tom Clark stands alongside figures like O'Donovan Rossa, John Devoy, and Robert Dimmitt. He symbolizes the integration of a set of experiences 
that we will read about um, in history, and that is uh, experience of prison, experience of exile and return, of membership of the Irish Republican Brotherhood the vo as a volunteer, and of course in military action, and finally, of course, the events that led to his execution that we think of today. When names such as Patrick Pierce, James Connolly, Joseph Plunkett spring to mind in recalling the seismic events of that Easter week of 1916, we should always remember that Tom Clark is the connection to the previous generations and to the Irish across the Atlantic. Kathleen Clark, is his widow, is symbolic of those widows who, while suffering great loss, turned their efforts into providing relief for others and continuing a struggle for equality. I often think, for example, of these women who cooperated with each other. Eva Gobrew, who visits her sister Constance, who immediately tells us to visit Mrs. Mallon. And in the work of Kathleen Clark in trying to ensure that the families would be at least minimally looked after. And then, of course, they're speaking of their experiences, which would be very important for generations that followed. Tom Clark has rightfully been described as one of the key architects of the Easter Rising. Born in England in 1857, just a decade after the Irish famine, to Irish parents, Tom Clark joined the, joined the Irish Republican Brotherhood as a young man and thereafter devoted his life to the liberation of Ireland from British rule. Clark's road to the Rising was not an easy one, requiring much sacrifice and hardship, but it was a road defined by great resilience and determination as he resolutely proceeded in the direction of an independent Ireland. Having gone to New York as a young man, he joined Clan O'Neill and became active in their campaign for Irish independence. Arrested in London in 1883, he endured many years of harsh imprisonment and was later to describe his time in prison as an earthly hell, adding that the horror of those nights and days will never leave my memory. And I'm sure that the Memorial Committee will know as well of Kathleen Clark's great anxiety when they were deciding to return to Ireland, that he would have to go through something, as of something similar. He remained, however, committed in his resolve to strike against the British Empire. He spent some further years in America after his release from prison and returned to Ireland in 1908 with the intention of initiating an armed insurrection. Because of his criminal convictions, Tom Clark maintained a low profile back in his home country. He sought a tactical rather than a visible presence amongst the revolutionaries who dreamt and spoke of a new independent Ireland. And in those years leading up to the rising, that was how he planned it. His was a profoundly influential presence, however, one of planning and pragmatism, as he played a key role in the revitalization of the Irish Republican Brotherhood. His tobacconist shop was a centre for the exchange of intelligence, and not only among those of the IRB. Photographs show advertisements for literature and pamphlets in both English and Irish on display. Because neither Anagnoho can meet five shakon of year four, neither the pamphlet is not popularly a suya. It was closely watched by British intelligence, the shop, and yet business continued and behind the formal business, the business of preparing for a rising. Later, Tom Clark would stand be beside Patrick Pierce in front of the GPO during that iconic moment when the proclamation was read, read aloud for the very first time on the 24th of April, 1916. Following the rising, Tom Clark faced death bravely. The actions of 1916 gave, he believed, hope for a future Ireland of freedom, of an Ireland of freedom and of great possibility. Fader of Clean Akreva fall again arm. He and all of the leaders of 1916 died sharing a vision of a brave new Ireland, a nation that would be rooted in courage and vision and a profound spirit of generous humanity, able to take its place among the other nations. And thus, as we continue to commemorate the centenary of the Easter Rising, 
we are invited ourselves to continue the work of building a republic of which our founders would be proud, to seek to achieve the unfulfilled promises of the past as we imagine together new possibilities for our present and collective future, a future that we must achieve together, including all of our people. For 32 years, this bridge has served Dublin well, providing a vital link between the north and south sides of our capital city. It is greatly apt that a structure so strongly symbolic of unity and connection and the overcoming of constantly obstacles be named after the committed, determined and inspirational Tom Clark, a man who dedicated his entire adult life to the vision of a liberated and just Ireland. Marfaka skeris min la mawika sa gwalorish, la kush ta kush na kan hamashi kerig, agas la kor la karak valyakia, as drehet anas kvoha her a a anamnu, malam shivasur gina ahanta sa ta harre a hur tan lekra mor agas tan kiana reta masa kerig, is min lam kwa mawika sa gwali varfad. Wint an a hoit an fopa, a ta bali a gwithna er thomas a clearig, far a wil me dar fath fwy cwmyn aga. May I conclude then by thanking again the John Clark Memorial Committee in Dublin City Council, its members and officials, and all of you, for the renaming of the East Link Bridge. I commend you for choosing to honour a great hero and leader for whom recognition is long overdue. And I also want to again thank all the members of the public who have gathered here today in memory of Tom Clark, a man to whom our nation and future generations is so indebted. Garamila Mahaki Gilead. Thank you very much, President Higgins. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ord Varial, Balayakli, Akrina Nidoy. Sultran Herod, Michael D. Higgins, Sabina Kyle Higgins, Boyle Tuffa, Corn of Carter Balayakli, Boyle Tuffa, Erachtas, Akishan of Naharan, Boyle Kush the Quib and Kantamasi Cleric, August Clen, Tamasi Cleric, Kerm Fear Fatual, Velikan Shahanyu. Um, is Kush bro dumps it that tough on my case her on a girl caught her arse a shell. I was made a comores of Clara Kate Lena Oiri a mock in a casket. Kate not can't nag or the yen of the invade a harlot in night in the Ella Taven way. Um, the caught her is a caught her a plan all up. I was a girl of the grieve more up tree help than a casket. I'd like to welcome you all here today to Dublin's Docklands for this renaming of the East Link Bridge to commemorate Tom Clark. This area has seen some very interesting visitors down through the years. In 1800, Captain William Bly of Mutiny on the Bounty fame conducted a long year uh, scientific research survey of Dublin Bay. He resided in Saxford Street, now O'Connell Street, and would have passed his spot regularly carrying out his survey. The outcome of the survey was the building of the Great Wall stretching out to Pooh Bay. The bridge was constructed in 1984. In 2009, we welcome one of the most dramatic visitors to the city at this point when the beautiful Samuel Beckett Bridge, designed by Santiago Canfield Farra, entered the River Liffey to take up residence. Michael Phillips, city engineer of the time, stood on this bridge and padded the new bridge as it passed through to take up residence in its new home. In 2012, it was the final post to pass on the final leg of the Tall Ships Race and it opened to welcome all to Dublin following a stormy crossing from a Caruna in northwestern Spain. Tall ships would once have been a regular sight in this area from the Rings End shore right up to the Custom House and it was wonderful to see them here again. And today it witnesses a new piece of history. Today, the 3rd of May 2016, is a hundred years to the day that Thomas J. Clark was executed for his part in the 1916 riot. Thomas Clark was a Republican, a revolutionary, the first signatory of the proclamation, and the man who did not want to surrender. He had a strong connection with this area. 
He was president of the Pipers Club in the North Wall area. In 1909, he set up the, new, the North Dock Ward branch of Sinn Féin and became its president. Following Easter 1916, he left behind a wife and three sons. And I would like to pay tribute to his widow, my predecessor, Kathleen Daly Clark, or Kathleen Van Eclaric, whose portrait we hung with pride in the mansion house this year. She supported Tom and his Republican beliefs throughout his life. She was a member of Common Amman and was one of the few outside the Supreme Council who knew that an insurrection was planned for Easter 1916. Kathleen lost both her husband and her brother to the executioners in 1916. She entered politics in 1919 to forge her husband's ideals at a time when women were strongly discouraged from entering politics. In 1939, she was elected as the first female Lord Mayor of Ardvera Walyaklia for ter two terms, 1939 to 1941. In her inauguration speech that night, she thanked the previous Lord Mayor, Alfie Bourne, saying, he never seemed to forget that he had in my person the representative of a man whom all Ireland honours. It is because I represent that man, not anything that I believe within myself, that he has put me in this chair here tonight. It is only right and fitting that we honour Thomas Clark and all of those who gave so much for an Ireland that many of them would never see, and to express our profound gratitude to all of the surviving relatives, some of whom today present here. In showing you of this medic, Smeenu are now with our Katja, gan with fear boychus as up winter krog in the heron, a refsula kosein these far a want the mach, da dear, agus da git seranik our fad. We are a very different country today than a hundred years ago. But the vision, the dreams of Thomas Clark, as the President said earlier, and the men and women of 1916, and the struggle for independence, is still the measure of who we are as people and as a society, the yardstick by which we judge our progress. The responsibility for building the republic for which Thomas and his comrades sacrificed their lives and freedom does not rest only with the government of the day, it rests with each and every one of us. The struggle for justice, for human rights, for equality does not take place just in Leinster House. It takes place in our schools, in our workplaces, in our communities, in our neighbourhoods. To me, this will be the real legacy of the commemorative events that have taken place across Ireland. A re-energised sense of community, of political engagement, of the understanding that while we have fundamental human rights, we also have responsibilities to each other and most especially to the most vulnerable in our society. A new generation must make up the proclamation a living document to accept the legacy left for them by thousands of Republicans who were held in Richmond barracks to build a society and country deserved by the whole nation and of all of its parts. Agus Darvin, Gorbea Rune, Shane of Sonus Alorok, the Nashun, Illa, Agus the Gokrinde, a Tort Gana, the Clan of Illa, the Nashun, Marichela. Tagalordini, a Coffer Buikas, a Garwalo, the Harva, and Obercru, a Yen, a Yenchi, the Kintu, the Meg, and Drihit Shah, Anam Nahit, Mar Drihit Kripnakan, Hamas, Ikleri. I would like to thank, end by thanking some people who have worked so hard to see this rename become a reality here today. The Tom Clark Commemoration Committee. Dublin City Council Commemorative Naming Committee under the chair of Kolar Michal Machdonica for supporting the application, the members of Dublin City Council for approving the request, and I want to acknowledge all the councillors here present today, Brendan Kenny and his staff in the City Council Culture, Recreation, Amenities Department, um, the Chief Executive Owen Keegan, the staff of City Council's Transportation Department who care for this bridge. Gurmila Maika the Uthran as the Ben Shuttling and you. Thank you, Uktra and Sabrina, for joining us today. I know it has a special meaning for you and Sabrina, and it is wonderful that you could join us today. To the family of Tom Clark, who are with us today, fall team ship, you have joined us from an emotional ceremony in Kilmainham Jail, and you remembered your ancestor. Please take comfort and pride in the fact that he will now be remembered by Dubliners every day. in our The City Council's policy on commemorations uh, recognised the role of uh, the relatives of those who participated in 1916. 
and the role of the uh, Tom Clark Memorial Committee has been mentioned a couple of times this morning. So it's appropriate, therefore, that we now hear from the great niece of Kathleen Daly, wife of Tom Clark, and chair of the Tom Clark Committee, Helen Little. President, Mrs. Higgins, Lord de Vera, honoured guests. As a great niece of Kathleen Clark and as chair of the Tom Clark Memorial Committee, it gives me such great pleasure to welcome you all here on this day, the centenary of Tom Clark's execution on the 3rd of May 1916. And tomorrow marks the centenary of Ed, his brother in law, Edward Daly's execution as well. <clears throat> the speech by President Higgins has made clear the extent to which Tom Clark masterminded the Easter Rising, keeping always in the background to the extent that he was for many years overlooked and almost forgotten. And the presence here today, this centenary, of President and Mrs. Higgins clearly indicates their recognition of his unique importance in the history of the Easter Rising and of the country, and the naming of this bridge copper fastens that recognition. A movement to commemorate Tom Clark was spearheaded by Porrick Byrne, one of our committee members, some years ago, and strongly supported by then Minister for Arts, Heritage and the Gaeltacht, Jimmy Deanahan. <coughs> In 2005, Senator Laros Omar Kuhn suggested renaming Dublin Airport after Tom Clark, but this went no further, and a later proposal to rename uh, the Port Tunnel didn't go any further either. Our committee, which is sponsored by the 1916-21 Club, committee, <coughs> excuse me, uh, represented here today by their president, <coughs> Nora Kowalski, in the front there, um, we were established in 2013, the end of 2013, <clears throat> and we've worked ever since to create a permanent memorial to Tom Clark in the city where he spent the final years of his life. I thank the committee members for all their work, Jim Doyle, Porrick Byrne, James Connolly Heron, Councillor Niall Ring, Michal Dudleen, Laura Sumurku, Tom Cooper, Terry Fagan, Aidan Lambert, Liam McGrattan, Sean O'Mahony, and Jimmy Wren. And we go forward from here in the hope of perhaps um, doing a further memorial to Tom Clark, perhaps near one of the shops where he would yield. I want to thank all the public representatives who have supported us, especially Councillor Lord Ring, and the staff of Dublin City Council who have worked so hard to organise this ceremony. I particularly wish to thank our patrons, starting with Mrs Higgins, who has been a patron of ours from the earliest time and a strong supporter of Tom Clark, Robert Bala, Dr Kenna, Dr Martin Manser, Justice Hugh O'Flaherty, Cormac O'Malley and Williams Russa Cole. We are sending our best wishes to Dr. Shane Kenna, who is seriously ill and cannot be here today. I also welcome family members of other signatories of the proclamation and all the members of the 1916-21 Club, particularly Nora Comiskey of SA and the National Graves Association. It's very hard to say what somebody who died 100 years ago would think of the hour that we have today. It's, it's, it's impossible. But I think, really, what we should do from here, as the Ord Mayor said, is to look at the proclamation and move from there. And if this is not the Ireland they wish to build, how can we turn it into the Ireland they wish to build with the ideals supporting it? It's a great day, and thank you all very much indeed for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, before President uh, Higgins unveils the plaque, we're going to hear a performance of a song, A Flag of Freedom, a song written in memory of Tom Clark by the Group League. I want to thank uh, President uh, Michael D. Higgins, Arthur Ernie Lawley, Lord Mayor, and all of you for joining us here today. I invite you all to join the President and his wife, Sabine, in the Ringsend Irish Town Community Centre for some refreshments. I do hope you will join us afterwards. So in a few moments, the President will unveil, and uh, Mr. Higgins will unveil the plaque. Uh, but in the meantime, lay. Okay, thank you. Uh, it's a great privilege for us to be here today to perform this song. <clears throat> we wrote this song a while back in honour of Tom Clark. It's called A Flag of Freedom, and we hope you enjoy it. As I lay here in Pentonville, a jail in London town, my heart 
is in Montgomery, the county of Toronto. They call me Henry Wilson here, for I keep them in the dark. And I'll die for Ireland's freedom, and my name is Thomas Clark. Sean McDermott, he planned to rise again.